Dave Kirby. Welcome to our Remembrance Day service. Please turn off all your devices. Please refrain from clapping throughout the program. As we gather here today, we acknowledge we are on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our relationship with one another. Please rise as the colors advance. <coughs> Please stay standing for the playing of our national anthem, O Canada. standing as Major Shep, Corporal Nobbs, along with our SLC President Keenan Schmidt and McKenna Spears light our candles of remembrance. May its flame burn as an everlasting remembrance of those who serve this great nation, providing us with the freedoms we take for granted. Please sit down. Today we pause to remember and lament the horrors of war. We remember Canadian soldiers who died in wars past the First World War, Second World War, Korean War, and Afghanistan War. 
We remember the young men and also women who never returned home. We remember their families, their friends, and their communities. We grieve with them. We remember those who were disabled or traumatized. We acknowledge their pain. We also remember all people who suffered the devastation of past wars, both soldiers and civilians. Those who were wounded and disabled, those whose loved ones were killed, those who were separated from family members, those who had to flee their homes, those who witnessed unimaginable horrors. We remember the suffering of allies and enemies alike. Therefore, we are here to remember, show our respect and reverence for those who have served both past and present. We would like to welcome our special guests, the Royal Canadian Legion members who provide services to veterans and our community. Welcome to our friends and families of the Maidstone community. Welcome to our Canadian service members and RCMP members. We are pleased you could all make it to our, to our ceremony. Please lower your heads for a prayer of remembrance. Today we remember with thanksgiving those who made the supreme sacrifice for us in a time of war. We pray that the offering of their lives may not have been in vain. Today we dedicate ourselves to the cause of justice, freedom and peace, and for the wisdom and strength to build a better world. Thank you. When we think of war, our thoughts go to the young men and women who went off to fight. Sadly, many of them did not return home to their families. Please watch the slideshow as the names of all the Maidstone Area's honor roll members will be depicted. As Mr. Tuplin reads out the honor roll, members of the grade 12 class will light a candle for each member in their honor. Following the honor roll, Mr. Tuplin will recite the act of remembrance. Feel free to join in on the last line. We'll remember them. The Maidstone Legion member, Mr. Ken Tuplin, will now read our local honor roll. Legion members come to attention, please. Let us remember in our prayers and during the silence those who in two great wars, Korea, peacetime operations, and now Afghanistan, laid down their lives for their country. Their sacrifice shall ever inspire us to labor on to the end that those who survive and need our aid may be assured of assistance. And the country in which we live and for which they died may be ever worthy of the sacrifice that they made. And in remembering them, may we ever pray, Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest we forget. J. W. Gray. <laughs> w. Stewart. H. H. Moore. John Sattel. C. Smith. C. F. Troche. G. Addison. W. Campbell. Vic Ainsley. J. McClellan. Gordon Pickle. Jack McLaren. Lewis McLaren. Ruben C. Hoff. A. H. Nicholson. Douglas Jeffrey. John Wells. Arthur Richardson. 
Reginald Colbridge, Charles Nykirk, Hugh V. Thompson, Robert J. Bryans, Maynard Kennedy, H. Ward, C. M. Wirt, Barth Solomus, George Body, Dwayne Hansen, and Alphonse Valier. We have the last post now. They shall grow not old, as we did the left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Will you deposit the colors, please? Please be seated.
The laying of wreaths is an integral part of many remembrance services and highlights the function and commemorative roles of war memorials. The laying of wreaths allow individuals and organizations to pay their respects and lay a tribute to individuals or groups. The gift of poppy wreaths at memorial sites is a ritual that occurs around the world, understood in every culture. The floral tributes signify both the beauty and the briefness of life and evokes memories of the other days. The Royal Canadian Legion. The members of the Canadian Army. Thank you to the wreath layers. I would now like to call upon Matthew Spears to share the famous poem in Flanders Field. This poem was written by John McRae in 1915. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt on, saw sunset glow. 
loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up the quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. A poppy is to remember those far from home, crossing troubled lands and threatening waters and dangerous skies. It is for the wounded and those who cares from them. In war, there are no unwounded soldiers. The poppy is for those who have died and for those who have survived with memories. A poppy is for peace. Every year on Remembrance Day, it blooms across our land. A poppy is to remember so each time you see rows and rows of white crosses, think of the families who suffered those losses. Today, those families still work hard for the ones they have lost. They, con they continue to remind us of what freedom really costs. So, on Remembrance Day and all other days, salute a war veteran and be sure to say, So why do we wear poppies for 11 days in November? Well, this video will show you the answer. The poppy. The poppy is a symbol of remembrance, worn every November to commemorate members of the armed forces who gave their lives in war. Its origins go back to the First World War. Amongst the churned up soil and shell holes of the battlefields of the Western Front, poppies would grow even when nothing else could. They would give Canadian doctor Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, inspiration while serving in Ypres in the spring of 1915 after recently losing his friend. He would write the now famous poem In Flanders Fields. The poem would go on to be published in a London-based magazine called Punch. In 1918, in response to McRae's poem, American academic Marina Michael was inspired to make and sell red silk poppies and campaigned to make the poppy a symbol of remembrance to those who had died in the war. The Royal British Legion formed in 1921 and ordered nine million of these poppies, selling them on the 11th of November that year in support of ex-servicemen and the families of those who had died in the conflict. The poppies sold out immediately and raised a considerable amount of money the funds went on to be used to help First World War veterans with employment and housing. Because the poppy appeal was so popular, the British Legion set up a poppy factory, employing ex-servicemen to produce them. This continues today, with the Legion producing millions of poppies each year. Watch our other videos to learn... We would now like to welcome Miss Kirby to the podium to share her poppy wearing experience. Good morning. This year on Remembrance, and remember in the last two weeks of Remembrance, Canada Remembers has developed a photo a day challenge from November 1st through the 11th. So. I began to post my photo a day on Facebook. Around day four, I received a message on Facebook from a high school acquaintance of mine, Hannah. Hannah wrote, Hi Carolyn, I just want to take a moment to thank you for wearing a poppy every day each year and teaching your students and everyone the importance of remembering those who had fought and died for our country. A lot of people only think of those who made the ultimate sacrifice, but forget the ones that fought and did make it home. Sadly, most of them fight the battle every day. Unfortunately, I have lost friends to that battle years after their tour. So as a Canadian servicewoman, I want to thank you for supporting our troops and remembering those who fought bravely. Canada needs more people like you. Hannah. Of course, I began to cry because for me, wearing a poppy has been in my family. As a child, I would go to the local grocery store with my mom 
And the gentleman would be sitting outside with the poppies, and my mother would always give me a $2 bill so I could buy a poppy. He would place a poppy over my heart and say, thank you for remembering. Then, when the ceremony day would come around, I would attend our local cenotaph with my grandmother and girl guiding group to place a cross. My grandmother had told me stories about my grandpa's experience storming the beaches on D-Day and then being taken prisoner of war. So for, remembrance, so for me, Remembrance Day has always been about saying thank you and remembering my grandfather. However, now in 2017, as my friend Hannah pointed out, for many of us, war is a phenomena seen through the lens of a television camera or a journalist account of fighting in distant parts of the world. Our closest physical and emotional experience may be the discovery of wartime memorabilia in a family attic. But even items such as photographs, uniform badges, medals, and diaries can seem vague and unconnected to the life of their owner. For those of us born during peacetime, all war seem far removed from our daily lives. That is why I believe wearing a poppy is one gesture that brings Canadians together across the country. In that notion, friends of mine from Manitoba, Quebec, Yukon, and Ontario have messages about remembrance. Hi, Maidstone High School. My name is Jessica, and I live in Toronto, Ontario. What Remembrance Day means to me is not forgetting those who fought and sacrificed so much for the freedoms that we enjoy today. Hi, Maidstone High. My name is Laura Plett, and I come from Stead, Manitoba. To me, Remembrance Day uh, means freedom and remembering everyone who died so that we could have the freedom we have today. Here in Canada, we're totally free to do whatever we want, wherever we want, however we want to do it, and we need to always remember that freedom was not free and will never be free, and we need to think of that today and every day. So that's what Remembrance Day means to me. A friend of mine from the, who just recently moved to the Yukon also wrote me a few days later on Facebook and sent her thoughts and her connection to the poppy. Hi, Maidstone High School. My name is Catherine Petit and I live in saint joseph de beauce province of Quebec. Le jour du souvenir signifie pour moi une belle occasion de prendre le temps de s'arrêter et d'avoir une pensée pour les gens qui ont combattu pour nos droits et notre liberté. C'est aussi une belle occasion de prendre le temps de réaliser à quel point nous sommes chanceux d'être dans un pays libre et que cela est dû au fait que des gens avant nous ont su se tenir debout et ont su être courageux. Je vous souhaite à tous un bon jour du souvenir. Therefore, no matter what language, what age, race, or social class Canadians, remember those that served abroad and here at home. We often take for granted our Canadian values and institutions, our freedom to participate in cultural and political events, and our right to live under a government of our choice. By remembering their service and their sacrifice, we recognize the tradition of freedom these men and women fought to preserve. So please remember to wear your poppy for the 11 days, be respectful, and honor all those men and women. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kirby, for your dedication and commemorating and inspiring us to remember and acknowledge that our freedom did not come without a cost, and that on Remembrance Day, we are all one country wanting the same things. As you are listening to the following poetry, please draw your attention to the screen where some images from the wars will be appearing. We now call upon Maidstone High School English teacher, Miss Malfair, to read a poem entitled, Don't Cry For Me, written by Callie Hicks from Sackville, New Brunswick. She won the Intermediate Canadian Legion Poetry Competition in 2012. Don't Cry For Me by Callie Hicks. Don't cry for me, for I am not dead, though I lie here alone in a muddy bed. I fought for freedom and for what I believe, 
So smile and be happy. I don't want you to grieve. I am your brother, your daughter, your son. I am the price paid for the freedom you've won. I fought the great fight. I've done my best. And now it's my turn to lie down and rest. But don't cry for me, though my body is gone. Through the peace you enjoy, my spirit lives on. Thank you, Ms. Malfair. We now call upon grade 12 Austin Pratt to read the 2016 Legion Intermediate Poem written by Gina Spencer from Corner Brook, Brook Newf Newfoundland. When my seed was planted many years ago, I was given a very important obligation. I am a holder of memories, of battles once fought and people once living. Every moment I think of the brave soldiers who died. Were they scared, knowing the end was near? Were they happy, knowing they were protecting their country? Or were they tired, watching every, wanting everything to be over? I watch solemnly as people mourn for the young men and women who never returned home. They wish they could have known them better before they were taken away from this earth. Remember them all, their names always ringing in my head, like shots fired, like unheard cries. I sway the breeze, never once wishing to be somewhere else, for I know my duty is here. I need to represent the fallen, who can no longer speak for themselves. I silently, silently tell their tales of bravery, how they didn't give up despite the fact that the whole world seemed to be against them. They fought on when they could have run. They rose to the challenge when others retreated into the shadows. My red petals are their blood spilled senselessly. My black center are their eyes no longer seeing. My long stem are their seemingly endless battles. My roots are the sorrows of their loved ones. I am the poppy. Use me to remember them. Thank you, Austin. We would now like to welcome with open arms grade eight Erica Elsager to the podium to share her poem. Her poem is in honor of her great grandfather. Jacob Jack Joner was born June 4th, 1922 in, so in Scott, Saskatchewan. His school years were spent in, at Kirsten School, just two miles from home. When he was 19, he was called to serve his country in World War II and spent four and a half years in the infantry. He passed away October 18, 2017, at the age of 95. He has 12 great-grandchildren, all present here today, as well as his wife, who still resides in Maidstone. He was the last active Legion veteran in the Maidstone area. He attended the ceremony yearly and took much pride in, it, in his experience as a soldier and gave to his community. Don't remember me with sadness. Don't remember me with tears. Remember all the laughter we shared throughout the years. Now that I'm in peace, my life will be remembered worthwhile Knowing that I pass along the way, I made someone smile. When you're walking down the street and you got me on your mind, I'm walking in your footsteps, only half a step behind. So please don't be unhappy just because I'm out of sight. M remember that I am with you, morning, noon, and night. Thank you, Erica. We will now listen to the Ratushniak Elementary School sing We Stand Together by Nickelback.
We invite those elementary students with white crosses to please place them amongst the poppy fields on the stage. The grade 12 art class made 200 white crosses for this year's Remembrance Day ceremony. These crosses are to symbolize those who have gave their, the ultimate sacrifice. In the South Africa War between 1899 and 1902, approximately 7,000 Canadians served. Almost 300 of them gave their lives. Each white cross on the stage represents 1.5 individuals who perished during the South African War. During the First World War that lasted four years, approximately 650,000 Canadians served with British, British forces and merchant mar mariners. Of this number, more than 68,000 gave their lives. One white cross on the stage represents 340 men that perished during World War I. During the Second World War between 13, I mean, 1939 and 1945, more than one million Canadians and Newfoundlanders served in Canadians, Canada's armed forces, in Allied forces or in the Merchant Navy. Over 47,000 of them gave their lives. So each white cross on the stage represents 235 men that perished during World War II. 1950 to 1953 was the Korean War, in which 26,791 Canadians served in the Canadian Army Special Force. 516 of them gave their lives. Every white cross on the stage represents 2.58 men that perished during the Korean War. In the service of Canada, as of March 2014, more than 1,800 Canadians are commemorated. So, each white cross on the stage represents nine individuals that perished since 1953. One cross on the stage represents over 587 soldiers who have passed in conflicts outside of Canadian soil. Canadians as a country have sent more soldiers per capita throughout all, all of time. 
Building on that notion, we would now like to ask for people's thoughts of remembrance. We would like to invite Major Shep to the podium to address us with his thoughts of remembrance. He is from Alberta, near Grand Prairie. He joined the Canadian Armed Forces in 1990, straight out of high school, completed two degrees, engineering physics and ammunition engineering. He has been posted to Kingston, Calgary, Edmonton, Shiloh, Manitoba, England, Ottawa, uh, Wainwright, and has been deployed twice on operations, once to Bosnia in 1997 and once to Afghanistan in 2008. Good morning. <clears throat> on behalf of uh, the Canadian Armed Forces, uh, the Canadian Army and 3rd Canadian Division Support Group, thanks for having us here today. Um, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. Uh, wanted to make it meaningful and once we got here, uh, honestly I was inspired by the level of uh, dedication and planning that's clearly gone into this. I've been fortunate. Uh, I've been to the battlefields in Belgium and France and uh, you know when you see the craters that are still there, um, uh, it really speaks to the devastation of, of the Great War. Then when you go to the war graves, uh, all maintained by the War Graves Commission, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of white crosses, that has an impact all of its own. Then you find the crosses with a Canadian flag, a, a beautiful stylized maple leaf. Uh, and y you start looking at family names and you recognize a family name. You, you don't know the person obviously, but it's a family name of a friend or an acquaintance, and you wonder, was that a, uh, you know, someone in their family? The, the most impactful, though, was uh, the simple phrase, known unto God. Uh, nothing uh, like seeing a, that maple leaf with the phrase, known unto God, uh, you know, hits you quite like that. So, in terms of my career and, and what I've seen, Bosnia, the thing that I remember from there is the crushing poverty of the people. Uh, they had nothing. Um, they would get to market or whatever uh, with what we would consider a rototiller attached to a, tra a trailer. And that's how they would get their stuff to market. They would move people that way. Uh, fast forward a couple years to Afghanistan. Same thing, crushing poverty. Uh, and all the other reasons that we were there as well. <clears throat> so why do we go where we go? Well, that's ultimately a political question. Why do, why do we do what we do? Uh, it, it speaks to um, wanting something better, not just for ourselves or our families, but for everyone else. Uh, the 12 great-grandchildren of the last surviving veteran speak to that. That's why we do what we do. Uh, I don't personally know anyone that died in Afghanistan. I know people to see um, or did. Uh, their names I recognized, people that lived on the same camp as me. Uh, more so, however, I know people that have been impacted by those deaths and those losses. Uh, people who lost friends, uh, a nurse from the Roll 3 Hospital in Kandahar who, after seeing the, the sheer number of casualties, because they didn't just work on Canadians, they worked on everyone, including the enemy when the Taliban were, were brought in, uh, but her friends from Edmonton, right? And so, She's got PTSD and, and, and she's out of the forces now. So these things are very real. So what I want to say is, um, you know, having been to uh, beaumont Hamel, where the Royal Newfoundland Regiment was wiped out in the First World War uh, as part of a Remembrance Day ceremony uh, while I was in England, and listening to the French Minister of Defence wax eloquently about Canada and the Canadian forces, uh, reading the articles about the, Dana the Dutch school children that put a candle on uh, the Canadian graves and the uh, Canadian war graves in the Netherlands every Christmas. Uh, it it's heartening to see the, the community and the individuals here coming together uh, to remember the long ago, but also the, uh, what's happening now. So from the Brotherhood of Arms, thanks you thank you very much. Thank you very much, Major Shep, for sharing your story with us. Now please turn your attention to the video screen as we watch what Remembrance Day means to the members of the Maidstone High School. 
What does Remembrance Day mean to you? Think of all the brave soldiers who have fought for our country and all the freedom we have today. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? Remembrance Day to me is a day that we can think of the families who have lost their loved ones due to their efforts in the wars. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? Remembrance Day reminds me of all the soldiers who fought for the freedom of Canada. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? Remembrance Day to me means freedom. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? I remember the fallen soldiers. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? Remembrance Day means honoring and celebrating those who have fought for freedom. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? It means soldiers that fought for Canada. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? It means uh, that I have a chance to remember my grandfather and the rest of our fallen war vets. My grandfather fought in World War I and World War II, and it's a time for me to remember and celebrate him along with our local vets in the community of Maidstone. We would now like to invite Sergeant Harrison of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to the podium to address us with her thoughts of remembrance. First, I'd like to thank you for having me today. And to the two gentlemen to my right, thank you for your service. For the past 14 years, I've been doing Red Surge duty on Remembrance Day. Over those years, I've met many veterans and have had the opportunity to speak and visit with them during the ceremony and after. I love hearing them talk about their stories and what this day means to them. Some have offered a few details. A couple years ago, I was up in Turtleford. One of the veterans leans over to me and says, see Jimmy over there? He's still carrying around shrapnel on his leg from a roadside bomb. And it kind of took me back a minute. I had to sit back and realize what, these actu what actually these vets did for us. Um, they're still living with it today. And um, there's a few other people that actually impacted me through along the way uh, on this day every year. I'll never forget the sparkle in Jack Joner's eye. We actually have a veteran in our family as well, uh, Brett's uncle, uh, Red Harrison. He was a pilot in the war. He's still living. He uh, talks about his, uh, his crashes. His uh, nickname ended up being Crash Harrison. He has um, lived through three plane crashes and uh, still, still talks about it today, so it's pretty interesting. <clears throat> so to me, Remembrance Day is about being grateful for the country we live in. And uh, seeing these veterans on uh, Remembrance Day and seeing how uh, proud they are for what they've accomplished. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergeant Harrison, for your view on Remembrance Day. Soldiers are often far from home. The grade six class had the opportunity to interview pr Private White, Rutushniak's grade six teacher, Mrs. Bellin, brother had about his thoughts and time in the Canadian Army. Please turn to the screen to watch their video. On November 2nd, the grade 6 class Skyped with Private White. He spoke to us about what life is like in the Army and what it's like being away from his family and what Remembrance Day means to him. This video will share a bit of what we've talked about. Now we're going to introduce you to Private White. Hi, I'm Private White. I'm posted to CFB Petawawa with 1st Battalion, Royal Canadian Regiment. What is it like being in the military? The military lifestyle isn't for everyone. Uh, it's hard on the body, it's hard on the mind. Uh, it's physically demanding at times. Um, being away from your family uh, can have a huge impact on people. Uh, meeting new people when you move, uh, you can move to the middle of nowhere. Uh, being out in the field for long periods of time in any imaginable weather, um, that can get pretty hard on people, um, but sometimes you just gotta take it for what it's worth, uh, make the best of a bad situation. Um, I personally enjoy the Army, uh, I've had a great time since I've been in. Um, uh, there's good days and bad days, it's like everything. Tell us what it's like being away from your family. 
one of the harder parts about military life for some people is being away from your family for long periods of time. Uh, I was away from my family for uh, roughly a year. Uh, it didn't bother me too much. Uh, yeah, I did miss my family a little bit here and there, uh, but between training and uh, hanging out with my friends, who I also considered family in the military, um, it wasn't too difficult for me. What is significant about this Remembrance Day? Remembrance Day has always been significant. Uh, this year is a little different. Uh, we're celebrating the 100 year anniversary of two different battles, that being the uh, Battle of Passchendaele and uh, the Battle of Emmy Ridge, where the four Canadian divisions fought for the first time together. Uh, it's also a battle that helped uh, other nations recognize Canada as its own nation. What does Remembrance Day mean to you? Remembrance Day is important uh, for the reasons of it helps us remember uh, the men and women who fought and died for our freedom and for those who fought, uh, came home and suffered long-term effects from the conflicts they were in uh, and also uh, suffered from PTSD. Um, it's important that we never forget them and their sacrifice they made so that we could have the freedom and rights we do to, uh, to this day. Today we come together to honor our soldiers, past and present, for the sacrifices they made and continue to make. We would all like to... Thank you for your service! That video was very informative and heartwarming. Excellent job, Grade 6. Every year, the Canadian Legion releases a video and a poster. This year, the video and poster were about the 100th anniversary of the battle at Passchendaele. Today is the exact 100th anniversary of the battle. We would now like to invite Grade 11, Doug Soroka, to the podium to explain some facts about the significance of the Passchendaele battle. The Battle of Passchendaele raged in Belgium in the summer and fall of 1917. The Canadian Corps joined the fighting there and in October and would overcome almost unimaginable hardships to triumph on a brutal and muddy battlefield. Canadian Corps Commander Lieutenant General Arthur Curry inspected the terrain and was shocked at the conditions he saw. He tried to avoid having his men fight there but was overruled by his superiors. However, the abundant mud, flat terrain, and relative lack of preparation time and artillery support would make Passchendaele a far different battlefield than the one the Canadians had encountered at Vimy Ridge. Curry took as much time as he could to head carefully to prepare on October 26th. The Canadian offensive began. Advancing through the mud and enemy fire was slow, and there were heavy losses, but our soldiers clawed their way forward. On an exposed battlefield like that one, success was often only made possible due to acts of great individual heroism to get past spots of particularly stiff enemy resistance. On November 6th, the Canadians and British launched the assault to capture the ruined village of Passchendaele itself. The fighting at Passchendaele took great bravery. Nine Canadians were awarded the Victoria Cross. Canada's greatest victory at Passchendaele came at a high price. The Canadian victory at Passchendaele was truly impressive and added to our nation's growing reputation as having the best offensive fighting force on the Western Front. Thank you, Doug, for your explanation of the horrors of Passchendaele. Please turn to the video screen to watch an informative clip about the horrors of the battle. The elementary school would like to end our service today by presenting a slideshow and by singing Don't Stop by High Valley.
Thank you for reminding us that no matter what, we must stick together as we are stronger as one. Thank you for being a part of today's ceremony and for honoring the Legion's wishes. We are honored that you were able to join us today for our service. We, re we realize that your fight and sacrifice was not in vain. War does touch the lives of all ages and all races. Tomorrow, the Maystone Legion will host the Remembrance Day ceremony at the hall. All are welcome to join. The senior art students will be providing the Legion and guests with lunch, so please stick around. The members of the Canadian Armed Forces will be joining the schools after lunch for some meet and greet. Thank you to all the students, staff, guests, and the Legion for taking part in our Remembrance Day service. Special thanks to Shell Ray Rentals for donating decorations. Please stand as the color party leaves. Thank you for attending our ceremony. Students can please go back to class. <laughs> 